we have joining us right now via Skype, Donna Jaffe from Peaceable Kingdom. And they were one of the amazing companies uh, that donated to our Sensitive Santa event. And there was one little girl in particular at the event who, um, she met with Santa and then I, you know, we were picking out a toy for her and I said, what do you like? And she said, oh, I love blocks. I just love blocks. And I knew that we had a game that was given to us by the Peaceable Kingdom um, to give away called Stack Up. She, we gave her this game. She unwrapped it and she was so excited. Her mother was so emotional. It was this amazing moment. She was so happy to see a child get that much joy um, and all from this lovely little box. So first of all, Donna Jaffe, thank you so much for being with us. We're thrilled to have you here with us. From thank you so much, much for having me. Yeah. You're the president of um, Peaceable Kingdom, an amazing uh, company that makes very specific types of games that are cooperative games. So, uh, yes. you know, tell us, Donna, a little bit about why did you make a choice to make cooperative games and what do you mean by that? Yeah, thanks for asking. Um, it was an interesting choice for us. We had been doing uh, other kinds of products for children, not games specifically, and I played a cooperative game and it played so differently than a competitive game that I was just smitten. I've been a game player all my life, I've loved playing games, and I knew as a company we were looking for new proprietary products to produce, to offer to children, and it needed to align with our mission, which is kindness, courage, connection among people, and games seem like a perfect fit. So a cooperative game um, is a competitive experience, actually. And the best way I can usually describe it is if you think of musical chairs. Musical chairs is a highly competitive game. Normally when you play, you might have five players, four chairs, the music is playing, kids are walking around those chairs, the music turns off, Four kids out of the five get to sit down on a chair. They scramble for those chairs, and one player is out. And they take away the chairs. And so players continue to be out, not playing, feeling bad, with one winner at the end of musical chairs. Well, there's a version of musical chairs which is cooperative. And that's what we love around here, the, co the cooperative version. So let's say you still have five kids, four chairs, but all five players have to sit on those four chairs when the music stops. They take a chair away. Now all five players have to sit on three chairs. So the children are never out. They're always playing, they're always working together, they're always trying to figure out how can we do this thing? They're strategizing together, thinking about it together, playing together, and then winning together. If all five children can sit on that single chair, stand on each other, climb over, sit on each other's laps, however they get on there, they all win together. And that's really what our cooperative games do, um, obviously not in quite such an up and down way, but um, in, a, in a simple way, on a board, on the table, in the living room, at home, with your family, playing together against the game. Well, and I love this because this is this is the worldview that we, we need to be teaching from the time that our children uh, come out. Um, the idea of cooperation and uh, problem solving and figuring it out and figuring it out together. I, I, you know, we, we've had the opportunity to go on some corporate retreats where they're trying to teach adults how to do this. And so what a wonderful thing to teach this to our kids when they're younger. Uh, what a fabulous, fabulous thing. So I, I love your game. I got to tell a quick story that I shared with you the other day that how I found first Hoot Owl Hoot, which we're going to play here in just a second. Last year on Black Friday, Black Friday is a little bit of a religion with my family. We all participate in it. Um, and people always say to us, what are you crazy? People are nuts on Black Friday. They're, you know, they're scrambling over each other. I guess I've seen those videos, but I don't have that experience when I go. In fact, we find that a lot of times we go on Black Friday and we make friends with people that we end up staying friends with for a long period of time. And last year for Black Friday, we were at Target, one of my favorite stores, at midnight, and we were getting new phones, new iPhones through Target, and it was taking a long time for our phones to get set up. So I'm talking two hours. We stood in line with a group of other, like 20 other people, and everybody had their purchases with them aside from their iPhones. And there was a young dad who was uh, in the line directly in front of me who had Hoot Owl Hoot with him in his uh, little basket. And 
you know, for two hours you're standing there, you, you talk about everything you can think of because the boredom is so crushing. And I noticed this game in his cart. And I said, now that, that's a game I haven't seen before. And I saw it said a cooperative game for kids. So now I'm reading the box. It also, it's a beautiful box and it's a well-made box. You feel this box and you go, okay, this is a well-made game, but it also has news on it about the fact that it's 100% green. So that caught my attention, uh, Donna. And then I started reading all the things on the box about uh, why a cooperative game and what this game does. And I said, this is a game that we have to feature on Autism Live. Now, we'd already picked all of our things for last year at that point, but I wanted you guys to be on this year to talk about it. And I didn't forget about it all year long because it, it's such a cool game, but it's not the only game that you guys make. You have a whole line, and I see that you've got a stack there. Talk just a little bit about your the whole line of toys. We do. So we have about 25 cooperative games for kids. They range in age, I would say, from about three years old to probably about eight or ten years old. Though so families can play together. Parents really enjoy playing these games. Grandparents love playing the games with the children, and often the children learn how to play the games on their own, and even the youngest ones, even the preschoolers, can play those games. So some of the games are get up and move type games, a game we call Feed the Woozle. Some are quieter, like Hoot Owl Hoot, um, where, the, where the children are very focused on the game. Some of them have um, challenges that can increase over time. Hoot Owl Hoot's one of those games. We have several others, so that as the children begin to learn the game, they're playing an easier sort of version. And then there's very simple rules that you can add in that can change that level of complexity or challenge for the kids. And in fact, because the object is always the same, in our games, you can have players of different ages playing together. So maybe mom can facilitate a game between a six-year-old and a three-year-old, each of them going for the same outcome, each trying to win together against the game, but each playing at their own level of challenge. Uh, yeah, I have to say, one of my favorite things about your games is that grow factor, that there are different ways that you can make it uh, more difficult uh, or make it easier, depending on which skills that you're working on. Uh, because so often, you know, we talk on the show about how important it is to spend money wisely when you're buying games, so that you make sure that you get a game that's exciting to the kids, um, that it's something where we're teaching skills that are important. And then the third thing is that you don't want it to be something that's useful for two months and then it you know we, we're getting rid of this game these games grow with our kids and I think that that's remarkable um, yeah. so maybe let's I, I've got the board here um, that you guys can see for hoot owl hoot because uh, I want to start with that one because it's the one that introduced me to peaceable kingdom and we got to say again all green elements that you guys are using these games are, are made very consciously um, you're using good products there's soy inks that are on here. Your plastics are made from corn, which that's I right. find fascinating and wonderful. That's right. um, that's right. And because that's important to all of us. We have to sustain our environment and it's important to model that for our children. Um, okay, so I've got here our, our game pieces out and I've got a little sun here and our sun is going to be our thing that's going to, when we play a sun card, uh, we're going to move it along so it's the sun setting. I've got it in the wrong side though. So eventually this it's the sun coming up. That's what, I've got the wrong way. Um, and I've got owls. But as you said, you, we can um, play with just a couple of owls for kids if we want our game to be shorter and a little bit easier. Or we can play with six owls, which That's I think right. is super fabulous. And then we've got cards that have suns on them and have colors. So one of the That's first right. things that we're working on here besides uh, cooperation and turn taking is colors. I love That's that. Right. That's right. The, the most interesting thing I think about Hood Out Hood is it looks very simple. It almost has a candy land kind of feel in that you choose a card, you look at that color, and you move one of the movers to that color in the space. The really interesting thing about Hood, though, is it's highly strategic. And as you said, you can play with just a few hours or you can play up to six. By the time you're playing four hours though on that board, you need to be able to use that strategy. And it really is sort of a leapfrog kind of strategy, jumping over hours since only one hour can be on one space at one time. And in that way, the children really do have to look, look at each other's 
cards. All the cards are paid, played face up. You don't hold your own hand, looking only at your own hand. And you share all of the movers as well. That's why all of the owls look the same. Each player doesn't have their own owl. So again, it's a different way of thinking about playing um, that sort of forces the cooperation, but in such a positive way that the, the children get excited, actually, about looking at each other's cards and strategizing together how they're going to win. Because the object here is to get however many owls we have on the start spaces to the nest before the sun comes up, which if you think That's about it, makes sense. Owls, we got to get them home to bed before the sun comes up. Great opportunity to talk about about owls and how owls are nocturnal uh, with our kids. So each each child takes a turn. If you have a sun card, I've got two players here. If you have a sun card, you move the sun uh, one space and you take another card. But as you were saying, so if I, I've got here an orange card and I can look and see that my pal over here has an orange card, I can take one of my owls and move them to an or the first orange space, and, and we can discuss it together. And if the other child then plays their orange card, they can take their owl and fly over my owl. And I love that you give directions that we should make a hoot sound as we fly over owls, because this... This is where the fun starts to come in. It starts to get really interactive. And I'm always saying to parents, bring the silly when you're playing. We, we need to play in these ways because this is how the games come alive. So I love that you give those instructions. Actually, I love that in all of your games, you give some tips and some tricks to the, whoever is playing with a child about how to make it more fun, make it more educational, make it more interactive. So I love that. But I, I, I know in playing this, that's when, w you know, I played with a group of kids and every time it got to the point where somebody could fly over an owl, owl and we could all say hoot, it, everything got really exciting. And they absolutely loved that. It does, and that was one of the things the inventor found toward the end of her play testing was how much the children enjoy that, and it actually encouraged them to use that strategy because of the rooting. So she added that in, it's sort of at the 11th hour. And it really has made a difference. I love it because it, when we think about this, all the different things that we're working on for a kiddo who's especially on the spectrum. But I got to say, too, that this game was not invented for kids who are on the spectrum. This is a game for all kids. But I want to tell you why this is particularly good for our kiddos on the spectrum. Not only are we working on colors and matching colors, because matching this to the piece that's here, which is a great thing to be working on, but we're having to strategize, communicate with other people, think ahead, great critical thinking game for really young kids, which is often difficult to do, um, but the game can be played successfully without that, but working towards it. We're always trying to look for the stair up because you might play this two or three times or 30 times with a child before it starts to click with them and go, oh, wait a second, I could have gotten my owl further if I had done this. Um, and that is the powerful, powerful moment for kids. Um, and, and when we think about planning ahead, all the things that are going to happen in their lives, that's an executive function skill that we especially uh, want our kids on the autism spectrum to get because it, it's what leads to success. So I'm all the time trying to tell you guys things you can do, executive functions really early. This is a great one. Thank you. Yes. Absolutely, absolutely love it. Okay, so anything else that you want to say about Hoot Owl Hoot, or I'm going to move on to, to Stack Up? Let's look at Stack Up. Sounds okay. great. A very different kind of game. A very different kind of game. So I'm just going to move my owls to the side here as I hoot and send them great. to the side. <laughs> uh, well made, too. Okay, so now I've got my Stack Up stuff here. I've got my spinner. I've got my stack cards. I've got my blocks. And I've got my smasher. Right. <laughs> and my, my uh, I, what do you call these? The tongs? The wood pieces? Stack, stack, stack sticks. Stack sticks. All right. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. And I want to point out that we've got blocks in four different colors here and that the blocks have sides that have holes in them, but they have sides that don't have holes as well. Do you want to talk a little bit about how this plays or do you want to just unleash me? <laughs> 
Sure, I can speak a little bit to it. Sure. Um, it's, basic, it's basically a tower building game where the players are working against the stack smasher. He's a little hand standing there, and he's going to travel around the board every time you drop a block or every time you spin him on the spinner. Meanwhile, the players together are going to try to build that tower, sometimes working together, sometimes working alone. And again, just like all of our games, you're going to be able to do this at the level of challenge where you are at. However, whatever that might be, you might just be able to stack just using your fingers, for instance, you know, just your hands, but you might be able to use your stack sticks, and that's where this game gets particularly interesting. There are two ends on the stack sticks. We have our dowel ends, and we have our foam ends, and this is actually a skill. This is, these are skills that kids learn at, at various ages, depending on their levels of capability, and so when you spin your spinner on your turn, it lands, let's say, on orange, at a certain level, you're going to be able to use the dominance of your stick and actually put those sticks inside those little holes on the block and lift that up, getting that midline development skill. Um, as you're a little bit older and you're able to use the foam ends of the stick, it's a little bit harder of a skill to be able to do to use the foam ends and lift that block up and then stack it. And it's even harder when you're working with someone. So if you have a partner, your, your teammate is holding one of these sticks, you're holding one of these sticks, and to be able to put that pressure on that foam end in a way that allows you to move that block together, that's a real, a real learning skill and super playful for the kids because they're not going to be able to do it at first, but it's fun and it's funny. They're not losing on their own. So again, they can be, in, they can be engaged and enjoy it while they're, while they're practicing that skill. I, I can't even tell you how much I love this game. Because um, one of the things that I love about it is this is the this is the other side of the board. So for those of you who have very little kids, um, let's say you've got a four-year-old and you've got a two-year-old, you can start with this game with the two-year-old. Um, you've got two sides to the board. So you can flip this puppy over and now we've got four different quadrants with four different colors. We don't even have to do the spinner. We can just, uh, but we can take, the, we can do the spinner if we want to and already, First of all, can I just say how good the spinner is? I hate when spinners don't work and this spinner works beautifully. Uh, it sits on the table and you spin it and it spins great and it ends on orange here. And so now we can ask the child you know, to take the orange blocks and stick them on the orange and stack them just there so we're just matching and working on colors. I mean, how much do we love this, you guys? I absolutely love it. Um, and keep playing in this way. Kids love to stack blocks. It's a skill that our kids need. It does work on hand-eye coordination. It works on all kinds of uh, motor skills, both fine and gross motor. Um, as you said, working on the midline and crossing the midline. Uh, really wonderful, <laughs> okay? But then, as you said, flip the board over and you can take your stack smasher and you can be playing with your kids that are older. They spin the spin and now we've got our choice about with the very, as you were saying, the very little kids can just use their hands to stack in the middle. Um, I've got, it landed on purple, so I'm stacking a purple. There are challenges that come as well. Um, or we can use the, the stick ends like a so, we can use the foam ends, or we can work cooperatively with the other person. So many different ways that this game can be played, but I love the whole anticipation of building up and that there's no way to lose because if they get the stack to go all the way to the top with all 12 blocks, they've won. But if the stack falls over, you would think, oh, well, that's losing, except that we all know that our kids love it when the, when the stack <laughs> smashes. So it's a win, 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 cooperative, working on all those different hand-eye coordination skills, strategy as well. Um, absolutely love it. We're working on colors, um, problem solving, super duper game, especially for, uh, you know, when you've got multiple kids with multiple different kinds of skills, which honestly, that's anybody who's got multiple kids. Sure. Absolutely. Love it. Absolutely. Absolutely love, love, love this game. But then, okay, I, you know, and, and in case you guys are missing it, I absolutely uh, am in love with this company and with these toys, but I, I'm leaving my favorite for last. 
Um, <laughs> my favorite out of out of all these three games is the friends and neighbors, the helping game. Uh, okay, so I'm going to set this up a little bit. Um, and do you want to talk a little bit about that while I'm moving my blocks to the side? Sure. So one of the things, obviously, that we're doing by encouraging families, encouraging children to play cooperatively, is to build those empathy skills. And I think we took the leap and actually made a game that works very specifically on looking at empathy and how might you even just encourage the idea of empathy with children, encourage those skills, those social emotional skills with children through a game. And and um, so that's what Friends and Neighbors is really about. It's a very simple game for the youngest children. Um, it's a matching game. The children reach their hand into a little bag and pull out a token. And that token may or may not match one of the spaces on the board that they're looking at. But their board that they're playing with um, has a variety of people or characters on it that are in a situation, they're having an experience of an emotion. It could be sadness or fear or disappointment. And the child's job is to find the match of the token for what might actually help them. So the children playing the game actually get the opportunity to be a little helper. That's, that's what we're trying to encourage here. How do you cultivate those feelings of what, it, what it's like to be a helper and what it's like to look at someone else and understand really how they're feeling, really put yourself in their shoes in that way and experience and name those emotions. Because we know that naming those emotions understanding them, realizing that you have them and that other people have them as well is really the first step to compassion and kindness and being um, emotionally intelligent um, and what, what important skills for our kids to learn and to begin to build those habits when they're really young kids is what we're, what we're going for in Friends and Neighbors. Absolutely love this game. And I want to point out each one of the games comes with an age uh, suggested age, it comes with the suggested players, and it also tells you the approximate number of minutes you can expect to be playing this game, which, love that, right? And I love that it's a short duration um, for each one of these games. These games are not games that take an hour to play. For this one, it says it takes 10 minutes to play. We were talking about this yesterday, that when I really encourage people when you're going to play games, you don't just go get one board game. You go and get three or four um, to teach your, you know, children that uh, we're going to play this for a few minutes and then we're going to play this. And each time the rules are different. It really helps to work on uh, taking turns uh, when you're doing it in different ways. Helps them to generalize to take that back to the the playground, and that the rules are different with each game. Um, absolutely love that. So I love that these have short duration because that's the way we get kids interested in playing games. So you were saying, the, here's an example of one of these cards. It's like a bingo card and we want to fill the bingo card. And, mm -hmm. and we've got all these scenarios. Now, for any of you who have little kids and you are going through an intensive ABA program, you know that at some point you're gonna to begin to work on emotions and you're gonna work on it fairly early. And you're gonna work on it as many different ways as you can and you're gonna start uh, cutting out pictures out of newspapers so that your child can look at a wide range of expressions. We've seen this even in the Temple Grandin movie. Um, they, they do a whole segment in the movie where the aunt goes around and takes uh, pictures of Temple and of other people making facial expressions and then writing down what the emotion is so that she can identify when she sees other people making that face what it is that they're feeling. This is super duper important. Um, this is one of the, the, the groundbreaking things in terms of teaching, as you were saying, empathy. Um, and and, and it's, a, it's a groundbreaker for social skills. For all the social skills that are going to come later on, we have to recognize people's expression and tie it to emotions and things that might have happened and really start to think in our minds, what can we do? Can we change our behavior? Can they change their behavior? 
how can we problem solve? This game hits all of that, hits it out of the park, and you can do it with very young kiddos. So I, I, I love that there are other skills involved too. We've got the baggie. I played this with a group of kids. One of the children couldn't read yet. Um, but it didn't matter because there were pictures and as we were reading the things, she got excited and wanted to read the things. So great pre-reading game. Um, but we work on pincer grasp, reaching into the bag to get out one piece. So we're al always working on our fine motor things. And on our piece, it has a picture and, a, and a, the second half of a poem. As we look down on our board, for our really young kids who aren't reading, all they have to do is look to match this token. They may not understand all the other things that are going on, but they can match the token. But now we have the teachable moment where we as a parent read the block. Um, and of course, this one is one that doesn't match. I would grab one. So when it doesn't match, you put it on the stop board. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so I reach in, I get the next one, working on the pincer grasp. Oh, I got another one that didn't match. Okay. Uh, but that's okay, because we've got something to do when they don't match. Uh, three, three in a row that didn't match. Okay, now I got a dog food bag. And on my dog food bag, it, it says, need some food to cheer up. And I look down at my board, and I see there is a picture of a dog food bag. I put it down, and as it tells me in the directions that it's super duper important that I read, that it says a hungry pup and I've got a picture of a dog who's sitting looking very sad with a sad face and I read the second part so a hungry pup needs some food to cheer up so now we take a moment to talk and say what is the doggy feeling um, and we help the child to identify it and label it and say the dog is feeling hungry and and he looks sad you also given me a booklet love this um, that has, I'm sorry. Yes, I was just, I was thinking about that, the little booklet, which then also allows the family together to look and see what's the result of the action that you took. You, you helped the little dog, and so he went from being sad to being happy, and we label each of those little squares from all of the boards in this little book that's included, so the families can talk about that together. And of course, it's a very green one and we work on a green screen, so it's going to look different on their screen. But so here I've got the same thing that's on my board, but on my board, I don't have the puppy labeled as hungry. Um, so this is great because this is a prompting strategy and on the board, it's the, the prompt gone. So I'm asking the child, you know, what, how does the, the, the puppy feel right now? Um, I can get out the booklet and I can point to, we're working on a textural prop, prompt here that says hungry um, and then over here what isn't on the board is the picture of the puppy feeling full and feeling happy um, so amazing because we can begin to relate this to the child and say how do you feel when you're hungry um, and how do you feel when you're full so that later on in another context when we're someplace and our child is getting cranky and we're saying you know I think you're hungry are you hungry it gives them context to understand their own emotions and then we can move it to understanding other people's emotions great great progression anybody who is working intensively on an ABA program, you need this game. You need this game. Um, it's absolutely amazing. I love also um, that it rhymes, that our poem rhymes because it's easier to remember. These kinds of things are gonna stick in our kids' heads. The more we play it, the more they're gonna, and it's a wide range of issues, although, you know, a small little booklet, a wide range of issues where we've problem solved, we've identified a problem, we've got the facial expression, and we've identified what, how we could solve the problem and what would turn the person back into being happy. I absolutely adore this game. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's lovely to hear. Uh, yeah, no, it's so smart. It's so useful. Um, truly remarkable and great to play with our kids and then um, have them play with friends. I think this should be in every single preschool and every single kindergarten class because it is so amazing. And again, well made and made with our environment in mind. So 
Absolutely. And you know what else I love to compliment you on is that um, the way your your games go back into the box, I love, we've got this wonderful baggie that we put the pieces so that we're not going to lose pieces, but you also include great instructions in, with every single game about what to do if you have lost a piece. Yes. So helpful. So helpful. <laughs> That's really important to us, actually, that the game has a life, and sometimes you lose a piece, the dog eats the piece, it, you know, it goes away for whatever reason. We want to make sure that families can continue to play, and so we always give pieces away for free. So it's just a matter of sending a quick email or picking up the phone and calling, and we have someone ready to send out missing pieces every week. Now, what we have, uh, I mentioned that you can get these games at Target because that's where I found them, but there are other places that you can get the games as well. So tell us a little bit about all the different places we can find these games. Sure, absolutely, online, um, on our website, but also at your neighborhood toy store. Um, we work with a lot of independent mom and pop neighborhood toy stores, so if you have one in your neighborhood, that's a great place to find these games. Um, they have a wide selection, and if they, they don't, they're usually willing to special order. Um, you can also learn about the games on our website. You can learn about cooperative play or cooperative games or more about our company and each game specifically. Specifically, we do have um, a YouTube channel as well, which offers very quick how-to videos. So within a minute or so, you can get a general sense of the game and how it's played and can really kind of dig in right away on, on the game and get it home. Well, what a wonderful company. And these are just three of the games, you guys, but I'm drooling over them. They're so fabulous. It's Peaceable Kingdom. We thank you so much for being a part of our world and a part of our Festival of Toys and, and also for making sure that the, um, some of your toys got into children's hands who really could use them. There was such delight at the Sensitive Santa event. We thank you so much for your generosity. And we hope that you guys have a wonderful holiday season. And, and for all of you that are watching, great, great toys to give to any child um, that you truly care about. You will thoroughly enjoy playing these games. Peaceable Kingdom. Find them, um, I, as we said, online, um, but you can also get them at Target. We thank you so much for thank being you. with us, and thank, thank everybody so back at Peaceable Kingdom for us. Absolutely. Thank you so much. All right. Have happy holidays. You too.